I am Allison Dowda from A Double Dose of Dowda, and I want to go over a few things with you about what students need to know in order to have the prerequisite skills to solve problems that are adding and subtracting fractions with like denominators. What are the skills they're actually learning? How do I teach that in a hands-on way? How do I then progress students to the next phase? How do I challenge them and differentiate for my students who need to be pushed? How do I help assist for kids that are still struggling? So that's what we're going to talk about today, and I cannot wait to get started. The very first thing that we are going to talk about is the progression of adding and subtracting fractions. So just so we are clear, sometimes when students come to our classrooms, we think, oh my goodness, it's like they've never even seen this skill before. Well, guess what? Maybe they haven't. When it comes to adding and subtracting fractions, for most states, third grade is the year that students first get introduced to fractions, and that's it. In most states, fourth grade is when students learn to add and subtract fractions with like denominators only. And then in fifth grade, they will add and subtract fractions and mixed numbers with unlike denominators. Now, what research about teaching and learning shows us is that especially in math, we need to give students concrete, representational, and abstract models of whatever the skill is that we are teaching. Here's a preview for what you can expect. When we are talking about concrete modeling for adding and subtracting fractions with like denominators, we are going to, in this video, talk about pattern blocks and fraction bars. For representational, we are going to talk about drawing pictures and using number lines. And lastly, in abstract, we are going to just talk about written equations with no additional helps. So we are going to jump right in and I am going to go through these three concrete, representational, and abstract models for how to teach adding and subtracting fractions with like denominators. I want to clarify that students need time to work through each of these models. So this isn't something that you simply complete all of these models within one day. Some models might take multiple days to progress through. I'm going to be talking about some of my favorite manipulatives for teaching fractions, whether it's introducing fractions, adding and subtracting fractions, you name it. I love these. In case you've never seen these before, these are fraction bars, or sometimes they're called fraction tiles. What I love about them is it shows one whole, and then you have halves, thirds, fourths, the sets go fifths, sixths, eighths, tenths, some do twelfths, some leave off twelfths. But what I love about this is that they are proportional to this same one whole. So everything fits together just as the fractions should. And it's a great hands-on way for students to learn about fractions. And then the next thing, I don't know if everybody uses these for talking about fractions, but pattern blocks. I love these pattern blocks also for teaching fractions and dealing with fractions for students. Now one drawback to them is that you are limited to where you have one whole, you have halves, you have thirds, and you have sixths. So you don't have quite as many options as you did with the fraction bars themselves, but this is something that is very readily available, I think, in elementary classrooms. While you may not have class sets of the bars, you may be able to locate some sets of pattern blocks, even if you borrow from another teacher. So I wanted to first introduce you to the manipulatives that we are going to be talking about. Before we even start talking about these fractions, though, what I want to share is this idea that when I introduce fractions to students, when I introduce adding fractions to students, I actually don't start with fractions. Instead, I just have kind of a conversation with them about everyday objects. So let's say that I have two erasers, and I have two erasers, and I add three more erasers. Well, I asked the students, this is not a trick question, guys, how many erasers do I have if I had two erasers and I add three more erasers? And surely they are going to say, you have five erasers. So that's exactly what I have here. Then I'll say, okay, guys, what if we have one paper clip 
and I add two more paper clips. What do I have? Well, I have three paper clips. Paper clips are simply what identify what it is I'm talking about here. So if I have three paper clips and I take away one paper clip, what do I have? I have two paper clips. It's just what I'm using to identify the items. Now, I will also mention to them, all right, if I have one paper clip and one eraser, what do I have? Well, they are going to tell me I have one paper clip and one eraser. These two don't combine into anything that we can do something with. The same is true for fractions. I tell students, if the fractions are in the same, do not have the same denominator, then I can do something with those. If I have one sixth and I add one sixth to it, guys, just like erasers, what do I have? I have two sixth. So I find that framing things that way to students is really very helpful. I want manipulatives in their hands as soon as we start talking about this though, once we go beyond paper clips or erasers or whatever, whatever items we can find. So then I would have them get out their fraction bars, if you have fraction bars, and okay guys, this time I'm going to start with three-eighths, and I would have the students show me three-eighths. Then I would say, okay, we are going to add four-eighths to that. Guys, what do we have? And so they will be able to tell me that together this is seven-eighths. Now, I do like to also, during this time, I like to, if possible, have that one hole available as well, because I won't tell them this in the beginning, but sometimes we will have fractions that we will add together that will be greater than one whole. So having this really helps out. So I like to, when I model it, I have my, where this one was three eighths plus four eighths. I will have them line up the three eighths and then let's add the four eighths to it. And when we count them, I have seven eighths. And visually, what I like is they can see this does not equal one whole as it is. So let's say that we aren't using fraction bars. Let's say that instead we are using pattern blocks. Once we've established that this is one whole, this is one half, this is one third, and this is one sixth, and we have named those. So let's say that I give them the same problem I started with before, I'm going to do one sixth plus one sixth. What do I have? I have two sixth. That's all they need to know at this point is that that represents two sixth. All right, let's see if I have two thirds plus two thirds. As it stands, we see that we have four thirds. Now, one thing that I love about this is we, we would call this, as you know, because this is going to fit together to make a whole plus an extra third. We know that four thirds, the name we initially called it, would be an improper fraction. But I heard somebody say one time at a, at a conference that I attended, there is nothing improper about improper fractions. We use them all the time. They are still very helpful. So initially for students, if they call this four thirds, that's completely fine. But we do want them to move to seeing where, well, I can trade in these three thirds for one whole, and then I have one third left. So I have one and one third. So, it's really essential to be able to start with those hands-on pieces. Next, we move to representational. So representational can begin with pictures. Do not have to be a great artist to draw with fractions. Thank goodness. So what we would do when it comes to pictures, this is representing things that we have been doing. So you can actually have students um, begin by tracing pieces if you wanted. You could have them, um, I did that with pattern blocks a lot, or if they are ready, you can jump to 
different pictures to represent. So let's say on this one that I want to add one fourth plus two fourths. So I am going to draw my one fourth circle. And I'm going to color in one fourth. Now this, I know this is a little bit much, but I am a very visual person myself. So since I used the fraction bars in my classroom and since these were yellow, whenever possible, I'm going to use yellow for one fourth. So if I have one fourth and then I need to add two more fourths to it. One, two, I can do that. And so I can see that one fourth plus two fourths equals three fourths. Now another pictorial representation that the standards call for students to be able to use is to use a number line. Kids have so much trouble drawing number lines. Have you experienced this before? Because I most certainly have. So like I said before, we can have them use these fraction bars we can have them trace these if we want. So let's say on this one, I'm going to make a number line. And I know some people are freaking out a little bit because you're seeing me trace this and you're thinking, oh no, there's going to be a black mark across my bar. And sure enough, there is. But you know what? Who cares? It's okay. It's fine. So on my number line, this is zero and this is one whole. Now again, hopefully this is something that you have been able to do with your students before you're getting to this point of adding and subtracting fractions with like denominators. Hopefully they've been able to experience this um, previously whenever you're introducing fractions to them. So now here's the cool thing. I can take this one fourth and now students can easily see there's one fourth Here's one fourth. Here's one fourth. And so I would label these one fourth, two fourths, three fourths. For the students, then I can talk to them about okay, if we have one fourth. We're starting here. And we add two fourths to it. I'm going to jump one fourth and two fourths. Where do I land? Can't really see that arrow, but where do I land? I landed at three fourths. Moving on to abstract. Now, this is the part that most all of us are familiar with, absolutely all of us are familiar with, I should say. So let's say on this one, let's go back to writing one fourth plus two fourths. Now, I know that there are many students in your class who you can show them this and you can explain to them, guys, whenever we add fractions with the same denominator or with like denominators, the denominator stays the same and we add the numerators. However, some students, they are not going to be able to make sense of this if they have not first experienced the one fourth plus two fourths. We do not need to skip those steps because some of those kiddos really need to see it. So now we can say, okay guys, we have one fourth plus two fourths, what do we have? Well, they will know that we have three fourths. And you might even ask the kids first without even writing this problem down. Okay guys, if we have one fourth plus two fourths, what do we have? We have three fourths. Hopefully in their minds, they are going to go back to the eraser moment and they are going to recall one eraser plus two erasers equals three erasers. This time, instead of erasers though, we are talking about fourths. As you probably already know, 
adding and subtracting fractions with like denominators is not a difficult concept for most students. They are going to catch on quickly. However, the couple of milestones, these are the new things that we want students to learn that we are going to be tracking and making sure that they can do and we can pinpoint in case they're having problems is adding and subtracting just the numerators and simplest form. Now, for differentiation, for adding and subtracting fractions with like denominators, if you have students who are having trouble, if you go through in those milestones, if they are not successful on those milestones of adding only the numerators and leaving the denominators the same, or they are not successful with simplest form, then the two areas that they may need remediation is they may be missing some basic fractions skills. They need more hands-on practice more than likely. They need more time with manipulatives. Then if they are having trouble with simplest form, they are likely struggling with equivalent fractions. So that's another piece where you can go back and you can review with them and fill in the gaps in their knowledge. Now, if you need to challenge some students, if they are flying through adding and subtracting fractions with like denominators, that's great, but we want to push them to do something more. So you can work with them of sums that are greater than one whole. You can also work with them with mixed numbers with like denominators. Or you may differentiate by having students subtract from a whole number. Not a mixed number, but just a whole number where they would have to regroup that whole number into a fraction. I have put together a bundle of some of my favorite activities for adding and subtracting fractions with like denominators. It includes five activities. There are two worksheets, a matching game, and two bingos that you can play with your class. The two worksheets include adding fractions with like denominators and subtracting fractions with like denominators. These are just fun little worksheet mazes that are a great practice. I have adding fractions with like denominators bingo and subtracting fractions with like denominators bingo. And then lastly, there's a matching game for adding fractions with like denominators where students match up their cards. All of these are easy to put together and your kids are really going to enjoy them. There is a link in the description below so that you can access that. Also included in the description below is a link to a freebie that you can get your hands on. It includes everything that we talked about today, the progression of the standards, the strategies that we went through, milestones, as well as differentiation for how to teach all of this. So again, make sure you pick all of those things up in the links below. As always, thanks for watching, and we would love for you to subscribe to our channel.